Hi, Dear After Ellen viewers, and welcome to the latest vlog episode of Dana a Dollar a with a Glee. So after a painful first half of the season and incredibly long hiatus, this episode was awesome. All right, listen, let's just get this out of the way and talk about the bram-sized elephant in the room. We're not really going to talk about that this episode because this episode was great and full of our favorite characters and wonderful writing and stuff and we're going to have plenty of time to lesbian process this situation next episode. So just so you know, I'm on it, but we're not going to deal with it right now. And on to the show. We're going to we're going to think of 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 happy things like unicorn kisses. Puppy is wearing sweaters. Free ice cream sandwiches. <sighs> now don't you feel better? I know I do. <laughs> I do. Anyway, so like we do on Dana Does It with Glee, let's talk about some of the, you know, the highlights of the episode. Well, the gang's all back and aren't we thrilled? I mean, they have aged about 10 years, but they look and sound amazing. Ugh, it was so good. It was like, Marley who? Jake Ryder what? Quinn's alive! Yay! So apparently, Ryder and Jake are, are trading Marley off on a uh, bi-weekly basis or something. Listen, you can steal Ryder's girl. Don't steal his dance features. What's that saying the kids all, the kids all use, um... Rose and the four solos. So more and more, I'm really liking Brody. I love that he calls Rachel out on her absolute nonsense, but still, you know, really kind of cares about her. And also the fact that he invited himself over for Thanksgiving. That's, that's ballsy. Um, I could have done without the erotic turkey massage, though, however. Um, for the love of God, keep him away from Jodie Foster's clam bake, okay? Speaking of that... If you're in town, you should just go down to Jodie Foster's clam bake. Since you know Queen, you can dive right in at Jodie Foster's clam bake. There's so much to see and so much to share, so just come on, pull up a chair. Bring a change of clothes, cause you never know at Jodie Foster's clam bake. So come on, they just mowed the lawn. get a Quintana scene. Oh, and the writing was superb in this scene. It's like they actually remembered who these characters were. And the writing also really plays up to the strengths of these actresses. Um, Diana Agron's steaming underneath that placid surface thing, you know, you just, you just see it just brewing. And of course, Naya Rivera's brilliant comic timing. Katie has a slight obsession with Quinn Fabray. Picture in her locker. What would Quinn Fabray do? Um, she'd see right through you. What the hell? I don't know. The Quinn I know would have done a little more research. Did Unique look gorgeous or what? Gorgeous. Uh, Mr. Shu did not invent show circles. I'm pretty sure that even the original cast of Romeo and Juliet had a show circle. Looks like there may be a tiny glimmer of light at the end of this tunnel for all the clean shippers out there. We had a really, really touching conversation between Blaine and Kurt. Beautiful Kurt damp eyes like he does so well and beautiful Blaine Damp eyes like he does so well. Ooh. Oh, and the look of, of hope and relief that washed over Blaine's face during that conversation. 
school makes the girl's heart ache a little bit. <sighs> so as you know, our girl Marley has been having kind of a rough go the last few episodes. So I asked you on Twitter, what pieces of sage wisdom advice that you would give to Marley? And here's what you had to say. Don't trust the girl with the leather suit and whip. You never know where she's been or what she's touched. Always good to keep in mind. Eat, pray, gay. Well, she certainly is gay for hats, huh? 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 And in that same vein, keep the hats, drop the kitty. This one is slightly more unorthodox. Get a penis and you too can be a hero. Listen to Santana, buy more hats, stop trying to be Rachel, and don't have sex with Kitty. Dot, 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 yet. Some of you are definitely trying to make Marlitty happen. Or is it Kitley? Oof. First song of the evening was the best song of the evening. The mashup of Homeward Bound by Simon and Garfunkel and Home by Philip Phillips, which I guess is like the best Mumford and Sons cover band around. Our favorites, doing the thing that they do best. It seems almost like just everyone's voices and, and stage presence has even grown even more uh, since the break from last season. Um, it was just a, a stunning number. And just seeing all of them together on stage, you could feel the genuine, I guess, off-stage life that they have together as friends, too. I lit up like a Christmas tree when I saw them do the same. And everybody got their, their own solo, their own special part. It was like, you get a solo, and you get a solo, and even you, Mike, you get a solo. Come see about me. Originally by the Supremes and done wonderfully by our unholy trinity, Santana, Brittany, and Quinn. Nobody quite does that bored, effortless, apathetic thing better than Quinn. And you could almost just see in the back of Diana Agron's eyes like that, I'm almost out of my contract look, you know? It's fun. It's light. Uh, it's not too serious. It's a throwback to when they all did say a little prayer for me. It was a nice little treat. However, I was incredibly distracted by Santana's hair. So now we're going to kick off sectionals with, of course, the Warblers. And they're going to do us a twofer with uh, Blow My Whistle by Florida and Live Like We're Young by One Direction. Yeah, um, this was an interesting uh, selection for sectionals. Uh, this song is even more suggestive than Jodie Foster's Clam Bake. I kind of, I wanted to take like a Silkwood shower after it. I mean, they sound great. They, they're the Warblers. They sound the same great Warbler sound every song they do. I like how they kind of, their moves go from, you know, really small and stilted to like full on boy band. They were popping and locking. They were doing hitch kicks plenty. Um, did anyone else think that that Sebastian and Hunter's vocals in Live While We Were Live While We Were Young were really buried within the music? You could barely hear them. Um, and when you did, it was just like auto-tuned to all get out. Was anyone genuinely concerned uh, at Marley's face during uh, the Warbler's number, I mean, considering all the laxatives she's been taking, I was full on expecting there to be some sort of accident. And I did not look forward to what that hashtag would have been. Let's have a Kiki by Scissor Sisters and Turkey Lurkey time from Promises Promises. Yes, let's do have a Kiki. Hey girl, hey, it's Dee. Listen, I'm thinking of having a kiki. Are you in? Great. Girl. 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 Can you bring a cheese plate? I loved this number. This number was hilarious. It was funny. 
it was smart. What an what an interesting, completely wacky mashup. And I can tell you right now, that party really could have happened in Bushwick. Over the river and through the woods, mashed up with She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain by the Rosedale Mennonite Show Choir. That one girl could wail. And finally, New Direction's genius choice of Gangnam Style by Psy. This was a ridiculous choice for sectionals. No show choir would ever, ever pick this. I mean, there's hardly any singing in it to begin with. Granted, great dance number. Looked really cool. We're supposed to also believe they learned this in like two days. Impossible. Glee, you don't have to do every big song that happens. You don't have to do it. I was thoroughly disappointed. Um, not with the execution, but with just the whole direction, the whole choice of it. Just, I certainly don't want to end the vlog on a down note because overall, this, this episode was really, really good. Probably my favorite thus far of the season. What did you think? Did you like it? Was it good to see the old gang back or are you starting to get a little attached to the new kids? What did you think about their choice of Gangnam Style? Do you disagree? Do you think it was a good choice? I'm totally all ears. So let me know in the comments. Talk to me on Twitter. Talk to me on Tumblr. And I will see you next time for Dana Does It With Glee. Can you bring a cheese plate? That teeming under that placid surface that Diana Ron can can really portray so well. And